to Watercolor by Scarlett Damon. So in this simple little speed video, I started off by laying down some water and then dropping in some green. So this was um, some sap green and some Davies green, some May green, a really light, gentle green. I then moved on to the little seeds and for them, I used eventually yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and some raw umber more to the end of this. So here I'm adding in some orange. This was a mix of cadmium yellow and cadmium red light. And that's up at the top, the where the stem and the seeds meet was quite orange heat. So this piece is all about preserving the whites and painting around them. I'm not using masking fluid. There's, um, I'm not using tape. I'm not using anything like that. I'm just taking my time. In fact, this piece took me about two and a half hours to paint. So I took a lot of time um, and painted really slowly, even though it looks really fast, and painted around all of those little white highlights. At the very end of this speed video, um, and I'm not sure if it really comes out, but you'll definitely see it if you take the time to watch the full length workshop tutorial, which will be available soon. Um, but at the end of this uh, speed video, I also went over all the whites with a little bit of water. I glazed over it again. And in doing so, you kind of lift a little bit of the color and move just a tiny bit around. In order to really emphasize these shadows and to make high contrast areas, the best way to do that is to have darks right next to lights or the brightest lights next to the darkest darks. So that's what I'm doing here. And also because this particular side of the facing away from the light, it's a little darker than the other side. So next is the cadmium yellow and cadmium red light line through the center. And then I very delicately and very time consumingly stippled a little bit of red on top of that to give it that broken shine look, which is completely lost in this speed video because it's actually two and a half hours long. And here we're watching it in about five minutes. This is stippling, teeny tiny little footprints from my brush. And I went over it again with some burnt umber and it's a sap green, Payne's gray, burnt umber mix. And there's a little bit of earth green in there too. And I started off with a very wet version and then I continued to add more color and to layer it in as I went. But I only went over that area twice, once with one color and then again um, with a little more burnt umber to give a little more emphasis underneath where the seeds are so that the seeds would theoretically pop out a little bit more. It's very complicated in this piece, one, because it's so small, but also because there's so much going on. You've got the texture behind the seeds, you've got the texture of the seeds, and then you've got all this amazing texture on the outside with the shadows and the highlights, which are just making these amazing shapes. So here, <laughs> here it's finally starting to look like something. Um, now I'm going over with like the second and the third layers of paint and around the back, emphasizing the color and bringing that out a lot more going around the edges. But you have to layer it over and over and over because watercolor always dries about 30% lighter than what you put it down. So when you originally put it down, it looks really good. But then when it dries, it dries way lighter. And I didn't want this to turn into a pink pepper. So there was an awful lot of repetition in laying down the colors. To figure out the shadow on the stem, I pretty much drew exactly what I saw or painted exactly what I saw in the little pepper sample to the left. I'm filling in the base using Payne's Gray, Burnt Umber, and Sap Green, the same colors I did before, but a lot more Payne's Gray and a lot more Burnt Umber. And then that beautiful highlight in the middle of that stem, that was done with Davies Gray and May Green. And then the top is May Green, which I don't paint until the very end. And the underside of that is again, the Sap Green, the Payne's Gray, and Burnt Umber. So I'm, I also went over the seeds again. Now here I'm trying to emphasize um, the color between the seeds to make them stand out a little bit. So the point of doing a study like this, especially with the color chart on the right, is so that when I come to do my final piece, I can come back and look at this and I know these are the colors I use, this is where I use them, and if I like them or not. Of course, there's another thing is that I'm able to kind of work out all my mistakes here instead of doing them on my final piece. 
So doing um, a raw study like this is fantastic to get a feeling for what you do right and what you do wrong. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Toodaloo!